So I did it, guys. I went back in. I watched Batman versus Superman Ultimate Edition. I was uh, looking forward to this with a certain degree of dread because uh, if you haven't watched my review of the first screening of Batman versus Superman, you should. I didn't enjoy it. And um, I got to tell you, I was uh, a little bit surprised that I enjoyed this version of the movie a little bit more. I still have some major problems with the flick, but I do think that giving the movie uh, 30 minutes more breathing room to kind of grapple with some of the subject matter and some of the storytelling to kind of make sense of the nonsense of this flick really helps the movie. It did it also helps that I've read so much criticism and heard so many other people in their podcast talk about this movie, explain this movie, stick up for this movie, defend this movie. And we know that, uh, you know, the filmmakers with Zack Snyder and uh, his wife, Deborah Snyder, and everybody at Warner Brothers has responded to the reaction, both the critical reception of Batman versus Superman and also its less than stellar box office. And they are making some pretty big changes with Justice League. And one of the major things that they kind of recognize with Batman versus Superman, at least in its theatrical cut, and again here in its ultimate edition, is that this is a, uh, a dissection of the superhero mythos. This is a, a, a real um, deconstruction of what it means to be Superman and Batman, and it's so plagued with its uh, wanting to be kind of intellectual and trying to kind of create a sense of, uh, uh, you know, an education about what it would be like to have these real superheroes in real life. And it just thumps you over the head with that narrative from start to finish. And it really creates this kind of dour, you know, awful kind of sense of fun. I mean, you just don't really get to kind of float and fly with Superman and you don't really get that sense of, uh, you know, satisfaction when Batman is beating up the enemies, mostly because he's just a murderous thug. He's just a killer in this movie. And that still all exists in the Ultimate Edition. We also get to see a glimmer of more hope coming off of Henry Cavill's Superman performance. And honestly, I don't know if I missed this in the theatrical cut, but he's actually smiling when he rescues that girl from that burning building just before he has all of those Day of the Dead people uh, reaching out and everybody's so morose and sad and dour. Uh, but just before then, as he's bringing the girl up to everybody, he's got a smile on his face. And that's the thing I'm missing from Superman in this whole damn movie. He just doesn't enjoy the act of giving hope back to the population. He just looks like he's dreading it. In every shot where he's saving anybody or anything, he just looks like he, you know, he he almost doesn't want to do it. It's like a drag, like like he's punching a clock and he's showing up for work. And it should be the complete definition of altruism and heroicism and, and the world should not have this kind of gray kind of conception of whether this man is a hero or, you know, a, uh, a villain. Yes, thousands died, but Superman saved millions in his selfless act to kill Zod in Man of Steel. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people hate that movie, too. I actually liked Man of Steel. I liked its ballsiness and its gutsiness. But the fact that Superman picks up in this movie and he's even more of a bummer than he was in Man of Steel is just unconscionable. And the fact, the aforementioned fact, and the you know many times mentioned fact that Batman just does not seem to be that smart in this movie at all. He's just a rage-filled, just, you know, he's like literally punching tires and dragging tires, just beefing up his muscles so that he can get into fights and just kill people and that's just not Batman enough I'm sorry you know that's an element of Batman but he's not just a uh, you know punch first think later kind of a guy you know he's got a a real sense of being able to figure out every situation and he's outwitted by Wonder Woman he's outwitted by Lex Luthor he, he doesn't understand who Superman is and it's just intolerable it's insufferable for a Batman fanatic like myself and, and the fact that he kills everybody along the way shooting them down with machine guns taking guns and shooting them he, in his dream sequences he's killing people there's blood everywhere the, you know in terms of this R rating this uh, this controversial R rating that they applied to the ultimate edition it's kind of a joke I mean we've got Scoot McNary's character the guy that loses his legs he says fuck once and uh, we I think we see a little bit more gore but that's about it I mean it's pretty much an identical movie it just breathes a little bit more we have a a little bit more substance, a little bit more with Perry White, who really is just expressing his exasperation uh, for Clark Kent, who never seems to be around doing his job, yet he's employed in one of the most um, unpredictable and scary businesses and professions that exists in the world today, journalism, working for a newspaper. 
yet Clark Kent can just skirt his uh, his uh, jobs and not do the work that he's been assigned, and he still has a job, which is just crazy. You know, and I, I have been sort of dancing around a lot of different things. Jenna Malone is in this movie. She's really just got a couple of scenes in here, uh, but it kind of points to the, the research and the tenacity of Lois Lane, uh, played by Amy Adams, who I still think is kind of miscast in this role, but not to the point and this is my, my biggest concern and my biggest complaint with Batman versus Superman and Justice League and you know everything that we're gonna see going forward. Jesse Eisenberg is just the worst choice for a Lex Luthor and I hated it when I first saw it and I hated it even more now because now knowing that Brian Cranston was the obvious choice to play this role and Zack Snyder did a zag and chose Jesse Eisenberg to kind of, you know, confuse us and trick us all uh, with this kind of, you know, skittish uh, internet genius guy with some quirks. I hate this character. I hate him. He just doesn't have any sense of reality. I never believe a damn thing that Jesse Eisenberg says in this movie. I don't understand why he has such a hate on for both Batman and Superman. He's got this huge plot and this plan to get them to fight together. You know, I understand more about the, the nuances of wanting to rip off the kryptonite and then have Batman rip it off from him so that he can use it against Superman. Okay, I get all of that. I also understand why he wants to use Zod's body and drip blood on him and create this uh, ridiculous uh, troll monster from uh, the Lord of the Rings uh, in this terrible doomsday. That's another thing that I hate about this movie. I get all of that. Uh, I just I hate the performance of Jesse Eisenberg. Every one of his cheesy, overacted lines just doesn't ring true. And I just think of the relish that Brian Cranston could have taken with the same words, with the same cheesy script, with the same plot hole driven story that Batman versus Superman is, and he would have made it a much more fun movie. You know? So, my core issues with Batman versus Superman remain. Batman's wrong. Superman's wrong. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention Wonder Woman, but she just feels like she's casually slapped in there. Uh, you know, I think Gal Gadot is a good choice, though, from what I've seen visually. I think she carries that mystery quite well. I can't wait to see her solo Wonder Woman movie. I still think all of those cameo little uh, video icon reveals of the future Justice League characters are ridiculous and terrible, and they look worse than, uh, you know, some fan-made videos that you're going to find on, on YouTube, which is inexcusable, especially for the budget of this scale. Uh, but I, I feel like with the 30 minutes of extra breathing room, this movie actually benefits. It makes a little more sense. It's a little more enjoyable. And I don't know if it's because I'm just softening and I'm, I, I'm more acutely aware and I've come to grips with my issues with it. Still looks good. Zack Snyder's still a great visual cinematic painter. I think that it's a, it's a decent looking movie. It's just too dour and dumb-witted and uh, just, you know, just thumping you over the head with its uh, its silly messages, you know? And I, I truly hope, my fingers are crossed, that it's only upwards from here and all of the performances from here on out are better, including Jesse Eisenberg's, but, you know, I've definitely got my doubts. And here's another issue that I have with this as well. The Batman that's presented in this movie should not be a grizzled, you know, 40-plus veteran of crime fighting. It should be a young Batman. You know, I know that they had to kind of make concessions and work with uh, Ben Affleck in the role and, you know, borrow from Dark Knight Returns. But this is a Batman, as portrayed in the script, that's making all kinds of silly mistakes, letting Wonder Woman steal uh, information, not being able to second guess Lex Luthor, not even having his own metahuman research at all, not, under, not really understanding his opponent of Superman, you know? All of that stuff is kind of handed to him, and he uses all of that information to go after Superman. He doesn't even figure it out for himself, which is not the character. That would have worked if this was a young Batman, but they had to make it an old Batman because they got to they got to put Ben Affleck in this thing, who does an admirable job embodying the suit and being this badass. But it's just wrong for the the script. You know, they could have fixed this movie in a myriad of different ways. And hindsight is 2020. It looks good. We'll see where they go from here. But still, Batman versus Superman Ultimate Edition. You know, I I, I can't give it any more than a five out of ten. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.